in nature very few substances occur in the pure form most of the substances are found mixed with other substances and most of the times we need to separate the various components of a mixture in order to remove the undesirable or harmful components to remove the impurities and getting a pure substance or to separate the useful components the methods of separation will depend on the components of a mixture and their properties let us study some of the methods of separation let's talk about some separation methods when the components of a mixture are solids hand picking it's the removing of undesirable solid components or impurities like pieces of stone or broken pieces of glasses from useful solid by hand this method is usually used when the mixture contains solids of different colors shapes and sizes and the components to be separated is present in small quantity usually used for cleaning pulses and rice before cooking sieving is used to separate components of a mixture which are of different sizes with the help of a sieve sieve is a mesh held in a frame the fine components pass through the sieve and the bigger components remain on the sieve sieving is done at the construction sites for removing pebbles and stones from sand and also for sieving flour to remove husk from flour while baking have you ever visited a wheat or a paddy field after the crop has been harvested the grains are attached to the stalks which are put together in bundles this process of separating grains from stalks is called threshing threshing can be done by beating the stalks with sticks on the ground by allowing bullocks to trample on the stalks or by using machines when the lighter components of a mixture are separated from the heavier ones by wind or by blowing air it's called winnowing it is usually used by farmers to remove husk from grains after threshing let's now talk about the methods used for separating insoluble solids from liquids have you ever wondered why your mother soaks rice grains in water before cooking them the rice grains being heavier settle at the bottom and the upper layer of water which contains dust and other impurities are decanted away Sedimentation is a process in which heavier particles of an insoluble solid in a liquid settle down. The solid particles called sediments settle down forming a layer. Sedimentation is followed by decantation. It's the process of pouring out of the upper clear liquid into another container without disturbing the sediments. Another process by which we separate insoluble solid from a liquid is filtration it's a process by which an insoluble solid is separated from a liquid by using a filter a filter is a medium with very fine pores filtration is usually used for preparing cottage cheese at home removing pulp from fresh fruit juice and also cleaning muddy water Now here are some methods of separating soluble solids from liquids. Evaporation is the process of converting a liquid into its vapor form. When heat is applied, the liquid component evaporates, leaving behind the solid component behind. The liquid component can be recovered by condensation. Sea water is allowed to stand in shallow pits. water gets heated due to sunlight and evaporates leaving behind the salt which we eat two immiscible liquids can be separated by using a separating funnel the mixture is put into a separating funnel the lighter liquid forms the upper layer the denser liquid which forms the lower layer is poured out of the funnel through the stopcock 
Mixtures are usually separated by using a combination of methods. For example, if we have to separate a mixture of sand, salt and water, then what do we do? Now salt is soluble in water and sand is insoluble. So first, we will filter it. The sand stays in the filter paper. Next, we evaporate the salt solution. The water evaporates, leaving behind the salt. The water is later condensed back. With that, we come to the end of this chapter. Children, you can also see our other lessons through the links given on the screen. Thank you.